Now let us see how to drive one object using another object. I am going to start by creating a simple sphere and a box. Let me move the box down and here in the node graph I'll go ahead connect the end of the spear object onto my box object. This simple connection is called parenting. So what this means is a parent object which is at the top all of its transforms are going to be applied to the child object but none of the child objects transform would affect the parent object itself. You can actually see this in effect here. If I try to move the child object or rotate it the parent object does not get affected. Whereas if I actually select the parent object itself and try moving this or if I try rotating it the child object moves along with it. So all of these transforms are applied to the child whereas the child transforms do not get applied to the parent. This is the simplest way of parenting objects in Houdini. This time let's see how to drive one object using another but using expressions. So this time I'll again create the same thing one spear and one cube. Let me move the cube down. Here what I'll do is I'll go to the spear object and here on the translate properties I can right click and tell copy parameter. What this does is copies all the variable values for the parameter which you can see is presented by TX, TY and TZ. Now coming to the box object I'll go to the translate values and I can tell paste copied relative reference. By pasting this in you can see that Houdini has gone ahead and pasted in some expressions in for me. It has gone ahead and done the additional work. And also the box object is suddenly invisible because it's inside the sphere object. I'll switch over to my wireframe view which is W on the keyboard. So now you can see that the sphere object has a cube within it. Now if I select the spear object and try moving this around you should be able to see that the cube object also moves at the same time. Also the translate values which I have on the spear object I can observe the same if I go to my box object and click on the translate values. But this does not affect if I try to rotate the spear or if I try to change the scale of the spear. These are totally unaffected channels. Whereas I can go ahead and again reconnect the rotation and scale options within the box object also but as you can see I can just go ahead and connect the items I want and ignore the ones I don't want to. So for example I can go ahead and delete channels on the Y axis of the box and now selecting the box I can independently move it along the Y axis but by moving my spear along any other axis the box still moves. So this was uh, controlling one object using another but this time using expressions and the expression which we used here was a simple function called the channel function. We'll be making use of this function a lot in the coming videos. This time let me demonstrate that you don't need to actually connect the same kind of channels with each other. I'll go ahead and uh, connect the position of the spear to this box rotation value. So on the spear I'll select the translate Y, copy the parameter and on the box I'll go ahead paste this into the rotation Z axis, paste relative reference again and this time just to make sure I have enough rotation I'll multiply this by a number of 10. This time selecting my spear object moving it about in Y axis should rotate my box. So this is a very simple connection but it's not restricted to something which is on a different object. You can also connect parameters on the same object. Let me go ahead and delete this expression. I'll delete the channel. I'll copy the translate value which is there from my box itself. Copy parameter. I'll paste that into the rotate value. So paste relative reference and multiply that by 10. And now selecting the box object, moving it up and down, you should be able to see that the box rotates on its own. So there's a very easy way of connecting different channels together to make things work. So I hope you understood how to drive different objects using simple expressions like this. This channel expression which we are making use of, we'll be making use of quite extensively in the future videos. We'll understand it a lot better at that time. So that brings us to the end of this particular video. Here we learn the basics of parenting and also making use of the inbuilt channel function within Houdini. In the next video we are going to dive into understanding how exactly nodes are organized within Houdini.
I hope to see you in the next video. In the meantime, if you have any doubts, critics or suggestions, please don't forget to put them under the comments for this video and I'll do whatever I can to get back to you. Goodbye.